Check the description for the following discount codes. Some of you will already know that I'm a big fan of tactile transducers on our sim rigs. I think it really adds so much more depth and feeling to the way we race, you know, more so than even perhaps a sort of low end motion, to be honest. That what I used to run prior to getting my motion system in the back there was four tactile transducers. They weren't butt kickers, they were a different brand. Um, I think they were a German brand, uh, Reckhorn or something like that. There's reviews on the channel anyway. But I ran four of them, one to replicate each wheel of my car. Uh, that way when you're going over lumps and bumps, uh, you, you're getting all that texture and feedback as if there was actually wheels on the car as best as you can, obviously in a simulation style setup. So you, you, know, you hit a nasty lump, you'll get a big thud from whatever wheel it was that hit that nasty lump. You know, when you do a, a jump in dirt rally and you land down hard, all four transducers will give you a big thud you could have you know engine vibrations mostly useful at idle you don't want them sort of going the whole time you're driving because it muddies out everything else you can add in effects for traction loss um you know uh, abs type feedback when you lock up the wheels and all this sort of thing with tactile transducers and this butt kicker set up here this is a butt kicker gamer plus which is currently still pre-order i actually thought it was going to be due for release um, I suppose it is kind of released, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so you can pre-order it and they expect to ship on the 1st of May is what it says on the website here. $279.95, so $280, and whatever that would work out to be, you know, UK prices and, and, in, and in the Euros as well, or in Euros as well. Um, so this isn't their biggest one, they do a larger one. Um, but what you get with this is you get the tactile transducer itself which is a nicely, pre I like the design, it's nicely presented, it feels solid. This cabling is braided and feels really, really good. It's a very nice cable. And then there's a quick release connector on the end as well. And then you've got this little clamp here, which you would use for clamping around um, tubular cockpits. Maybe of some of the foldables, play seat challenge, uh, FGT light or, um, other tubular cockpits like the uh, GT Amiga Titan or the PlaySeat Trophy that I recently reviewed. Because you can actually, this opens up quite a way. Um, I'd have to wind it manually all the way out, but the length of the thread there, this will come all the way back to here. So you'd have a whacking great gap. It can really go around some big tubes because it's also designed to bolt onto gaming chairs like desk chairs on the sort of a pneumatic um, lift that chairs have. Now I tried this on my, um, Place it trophy because it's tubular using this clamp. I tried it on my chair that sat over there also using this clamp. And then in addition to that, there's three bolt holes here and I used um, M8 nuts and M8 bolts and T nuts to bolt it to my aluminium profile rig to try it out mount on it that way. So you've got quite a few different methods to mount this. This cable you see here doesn't disconnect from here. It is hardwired in. Um, so that's the tactile transducer itself. You then get quite a long cable that plugs into the quick release on the tactile transducer. And then there's two banana plugs to go on the back of the amplifier here, which I'll show you in a second. Again, this is really thick, heavy braided cable. So top quality stuff there. Um, this is the amplifier. On the front, You've got volume control, which goes from 0 to 50. That confused me in the beginning. I assumed it would go 0 to 100, but it doesn't. 0 to 50. You've got a high pass filter, which you turn on and off by depressing the button and then turning the knob to set the high pass frequency filter. Now I run this at about 150 Hertz. That's what I run all my tactile transducers around. That's the upper limit. I don't want treble effectively trying to come out of a tactile transducer when a tactile transducer is effectively like a small subwoofer but without a cone uh, if you get my meaning so i i tend to cut off about 150 and then you've got a button for the low pass filter this act well actually it's not a low pass filter that's also a high pass filter fixed at 25 hertz. So if you depress that button, it won't send any sound or feedback to the tactile transducer 
below 25 hertz. I'm not sure what I'd use that for because typically the low stuff is really what you feel, you know, rather than here, which is why we high pass at 150. So it is, albeit it calls it a low filter cut off, they're actually two high pass filters because they both cut off the high frequencies. Um, and you know, and keep everything in that lower range where you would feel thuds and vibrations from the road and texture and, and what have you. You've then got a couple of little LEDs. One indicates clipping, that would be if the input signal to the amplifier is too high. Actually, no, I think clipping on this shows when the output stage is too high. Because if I, yes, it does, because if I increase the volume beyond a certain amount with a fixed level of input, then the clipping light starts to flicker on. And if I bring the, the output volume back down, then the clipping light goes off. So it's actually measuring when the amplifier is clipping on the output stage rather than clipping on the input stage. Uh, and then yes, you've got a signal light there to show you what's coming into the amplifier and then a power, or a soft power on and off switch there as well. On the back, the two banana plugs that that big thick cable plugs into. Uh, you have an output uh, phono. I don't, I think that might actually be a digital output, but I'm not sure. I'd have to check the manual. I guess it's so you can daisy chain these together and run, you know, more than one um, tactile transducer, more than one butt kicker in your system. Like, like I said earlier, I had one on it to represent each wheel of the car, which in my opinion is like a good... One of the best ways to go. You could then add another one under your seat, another one under your pedals. Some people even add them under their wheel deck, which probably a bit over the top because most steering wheel bases um, have some form of haptics in them as well. But yeah, I think that's probably what the output is. So you can just daisy chain them together. I did read the manual, but I don't remember reading uh, about the output there. And then you've got line level left and right inputs. That is for if you were to use this not on a PC. If you were to use this with a games console or just as like a bass shaker for maybe audio or something, you would use these two RCAs going into your left and rights there. And then on the other end of this is a three and a half mil jack simply for actual analog audio. Now, if you're using this on PC like I was in my testing, you use the USB-C cable. This is braided as well. Um, that's also braided, everything's braided. Even this little wire splitter here, again, for use with consoles, where you're just gonna take maybe the headphone output, split it off onto your butt kicker, onto your actual gaming headset. Everything's braided, all nice quality. There. There's even a couple of uh, cable ties, Velcro ones for cable management. Um, but yeah, I'm PC, so I use the USB cable into the USB-C input, and I use their Hapti Connect software. Now this Hapti Connect software is actually an additional purchase. I think it was about $60 or something along those lines. So, so the whole package for a PC user, 280 plus 60 is 340. It's a reasonable amount of money. I mean, if that was in pounds, what would that be? 250, 260? Quite a lot of money to just run one tactile transducer. Now, Part of what you're paying for here is this whole plug and play, it's all done for you setup. The setup I used to run was DIY and that required a bit more technical knowledge you might say and I had to make up my own wiring. I had to find a suitable amplifier, you know, a four channel one is what I ran. And then I had to get, I think I used SimHub um, as the software that I had to get and then learn how to use that. A lot more complicated. What you've got here is just a ready to roll sort of plug and play package that tries to keep things as simple as possible you know for people that perhaps aren't quite as technically minded uh, as myself or as or as some others you also get a, a quick start guide showing everything you get at the bottom all neatly um, and on the back that continues and then there is actually the manual for the amplifier itself as well uh, just to double check yes the um what they call the low filter cut off does reduce all frequencies below 25 hertz. So it's actually a high pass filter, like I was saying. Cuts off at 25 hertz, so nothing lower comes through to your tactile transducer. Um, I mean, it is quite a small 
transducer, actually. It's, you know, if you look at the palm of my hand, it's not massive. But what this basically is, is inside, it's literally like a speaker without the cone. So you've got your magnet and your coil, and often a weight in the middle, and as it vibrates, it, you know, as this sort of moves based on the frequency sent to it, you get the vibrations transferred through your rig, your seat, your play seat, whatever it might be, you've got it bolted or clamped to. Now, the reason this is all off is because obviously I can't demonstrate this on my rig. If I sat in my rig there with this bolted under my seat, first of all, you couldn't see it. And even if you could see it, you're just going to see a static image of it sitting there doing nothing because it doesn't visibly move to look at. So I thought the easiest way to demonstrate this is for me to actually set it up here on my desk and you'll be able to hear it vibrating my table and hopefully this glass of water that's in shot you'll see vibrate as well, just to see how it transfers through my wooden desk. I've then got a glass monitor stand here with a glass of water on. Um, so let's get this all plugged back in. Obviously the power cable comes with it as well. UK in my case, because I'm here in the UK. So let's just plug everything in and I'll show that to you. Again, banana plugs go in the back. They are marked red and black for your positive and negative so you don't get it wrong. And then we've got this quick release on the transducer itself, which again, literally, they're banana plugs again, in actual fact, you just slot them in together like that. So that's now plugged in. I then just need my USB cable. And again, because I'm on PC, I'm using their Hapti Connect software. So if you were doing this, you would need to download that too. And then this will go into the USB-C on the back of the unit here, flick the switch on. Um, and I've just got the little power light on the bottom here now if i press that the uh, other two led screens are up now those led screens are actually not very good that's the only thing i'm going to say that i'm unhappy with about this they're actually really hard to read in daylight like it doesn't matter whether you're straight on whether you're off angle they're just not good i mean on, on camera it looks like you can't read anything to me from my little preview window here and it's actually not much better in real life so that is a little bit pants um considering the money they could have used much higher quality screens to be honest this is a 90 watt rms amplifier when running at 2 ohms by the way and 45 rms at 4 ohm i actually don't know i'm assuming oh yeah this is 2 ohm so we do get the full 90 watts rms available out of the amplifier and this has a so this is a useful piece of information the frequency response for the butt kicker itself is five hertz to 200 hertz. So me cutting off at 150 hertz is perfect because it wouldn't go much higher than that anyway. And once you get over 200 hertz, you're getting into the more mid bass where you would hear it rather than feel it. And in my experience, I like about 150. So that falls nicely within the range of what it does anyway. So that is plugged in. I've already got the software up here. Um, and I'm just on a, on a test screen so I can click test and it will just vibrate. It's the easiest way to demonstrate it. Um, the software itself, perhaps you connects, once you get it installed, it'll recognize what sims you've got. And should you load one of those sims up, um, you'll be able to have a whole bunch of sliders, you know, things like traction loss, things like ABS, things like road texture, you know, engine vibrations. They're all there and they're just sliders. You can move them how you want to do it and, and get everything tuned to your liking. And I'd recommend doing one at a time going out in the car, seeing how that feels, coming back, turn that one off, try the next one, tune them all individually. Otherwise you just get a big mess of vibration going on the whole time. Especially if you've only got one transducer, it's very easy to muddy that all up with all sorts of effects and feedback. With only one transducer, I would be very selective about what I had. I think I would probably only use road texture, to be honest. So I'm getting all my little lumps and bumps as I'm going along. And if I did a jump into that rally, I would feel it. I don't think I'd use anything else because there's just not enough clarity with only one, you know, uh, transducer here. Because you've got to remember, it is a speaker. So if you're asking it to do like six different frequencies at once, maybe you're doing engine vibrations that are up fairly high, 150 hertz. Maybe you, you, you have an impact and it's a low thud. Maybe you're going across gravel or, or a, a cattle grid or something. The poor speaker is trying to do all these different frequencies all at the same time, which means it will do none of them very well. So be very selective about what you choose if only running one of them. 
Anyway, let's do some demonstrations. We're at 25, which is 50% volume. This clamp is all loose, so you should hear that vibrate. Um, I'm gonna leave my hand off of it for now, and you'll hear right, a rattle, I imagine. Um, if I put that on and put that on, and plug that in. Uh, yeah, scared the crap out of me. So, you, like, in fact, if I put it on the amp, you may even see it like jumping around in the background there. Yeah, you can. So you can see it vibrates a fair bit at only 50% volume. Now if I hold it with my hand so it isn't all loose, hopefully you'll just see the water in the glass vibrate. Yeah, you can. And you can probably hear there's now a much lower rattle where it's just things on my desk rattling. So that was at half volume. We'll go up to three quarter volume and do the same thing again. Again, you can watch the glass if you want. Hopefully it's clear enough to see. The glass is actually moving now on my desk, making its way back towards, towards the monitor. Yeah, you should be able to see this. Let's just pull it forward again. And now let's go up to 100% volume. And again, this is just using the HapTConnect test function. It's the easiest way to show it. Yeah, that glass is really going for a walk now. Once more for luck. So yeah, that's that's the easiest way for me to demonstrate what it does. It puts out a fair bit of vibration for what it is. And I know someone in the comments are gonna say, Carl, how does this one compare to one of those Rekhorn ones you tested before and that I've been using? I'm gonna say about the same. Um, these, my, my record ones were 50, no, they were 100 RMS actually each. So it doesn't actually say what the RMS of this is, but I'm gonna assume it's less than 90, otherwise it's gonna be getting a little snug with the amplifier being at 90 watts at 100% volume as well. But yeah, it feels very, very similar. And I, you know, I had the same experience bolting it to the rig. Obviously it felt quite a bit less than what I'm used to because I run four of them, or did run four of them before I got my um, four vertical actuators with my motion set up. So yes, I would say it's comparable to the Redcorn ones that I ran before. Um, but obviously that's a DIY setup. And like I mentioned earlier, what you're buying here is a ready to run solution that comes with all the cables, all the attachments, a quick start guide, an amplifier, really nice high quality Brady cables, ready to just plug in and go basically. Like you do have to buy the software, and I, to be honest, I think that software should come with it for free because you're already paying $280 for it in the first place. I think it's a little bit cheeky asking you to then pay for the software on top. Obviously, if you're on console, obviously, you don't need the software. So maybe that's their justification. It's like if you're on console, you don't need to buy the software. But uh, nah, to be honest, they should just throw it in. It's just really not enough money to worry about. In fact, the um, for them, that is, the uh, SIM Hub software that I used to run mine was like a fiver, or free, in fact, I think, if you wanted to have limited functionality. So yeah, that should definitely be thrown in with the, with the whole package. But yeah, I've got no problem recommending this. Um, it all works exactly as it should. The software is easy to use, the build quality is great. My only two negatives are the display on the amplifier here is a bit pony, um, and I think the price is a little bit high considering you have to buy the software on top. There are links in the description should you want to buy one. Um, oh, there's a, did I show you the volume, con the remote control yet? It's a little remote control here. You've got the volume, power, um, you can turn your two high pass filters off, the one they call low cut and then the high cut one, and you can adjust that top end um, frequency cut off, you know, like I had it 150, you could move it up to 200 or down to 100, whatever you want, you can do that on there as well. So they can both be turned off, the high, the high, high pass can be adjusted, the volume can be adjusted, and you can shut the unit, yeah, on and off using that as well. But um, yeah, I love haptics, and I think everybody should have tactile transducers on their rigs, whether you buy a butt kicker gamer plus or whether you DIY it is entirely up to you but 
the whole little package here all works fine. Oh, speaking of package, this is what the box looks like in case anybody was interested. But yeah, I think everyone should have tactile transducers, at least one under the middle of your bum, you know, just doing your, uh, your road texture, if nothing else. But in an ideal world, one representing each wheel and maybe one under your butt and one under your pedals as well. So you've got six of them really giving you a good thud in things like Dirt Rally where you land a jump. You know, it's great because you're going along and you're getting all these little lumps and bumps and vibrations and then you launch off the jump and they all just go silent as you're sort of going through the air. And then as soon as you hit the ground again, wallop, great thud, and they're all going again. It's a very, it really adds to the whole experience and that's why I'm a big fan of tactile transducers. So yeah, this all gets the thumbs up from me. Like I say, my only complaints, the LED screens or LCD screens, whatever they are, could definitely be a lot better. And I think the software should definitely be included uh, and not an additional add-on. At least that's how it appears to me. I mean, I, they gave me a link to go and get the software, and when I went on the website to get it, the price was there at $59.99. Now, I had a code to put in, um, so I didn't have to pay for it, but otherwise, if I was a retail customer, it looks like you, you, know, you have to buy the software on top of this little package as well. But anyway, yes, that's where it is Right now, oh, it looks like they're doing interest-free installments as well, should anybody want to spread the cost a little bit. $69.98 a month using something called Shop Pay. Uh, I guess that's um, for US uh, orders. But yeah, anyway, that's my review of the Butt Kicker Gamer Plus. Pre-orders available now, shipping 1st of May. Links are in the description should you want to get one. Um, thank you very much for watching, and as always, take it easy.